Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into red-black trees and learning how the insertion process works. Since there's a lot to cover, I'm splitting this into two videos. In this one, we'll focus on the insertion algorithm itself, and in the next, we'll walk through step-by-step -step examples to see it in action. If you haven't seen our previous videos on red-black tree basics and rotations, I highly recommend checking them out first. That'll give you a solid foundation before we dive into today's topic. A red-black tree is a special type of binary search tree that stays balanced by following five specific rules. We've gone over these in detail before, so if you need a quick refresher, feel free to pause the video and review them. The insertion process in a red-black tree happens in two main steps. First, we insert the new node just like in a regular binary search tree. Starting from the root, we compare values. If the new value is smaller, we go left. If it's larger, we go right, until we find the right spot and insert the node. This part follows the standard binary search tree rules, with one key difference. The newly inserted node is always red. Second, we check if this new node violates any red-black tree rules. If it does, we restore balance by adjusting colors and performing rotations. So, what rules could be violated when inserting a red node? Let's go through them one by one. Rule 1 states that every node must be either red or black. This rule is never violated because the new node is always red. Rule 2 states that the root must always be black. This rule could be violated if we insert a red node into an empty tree, because that red node would become the root. But fixing this is easy. We simply recolor the root to black. Rule 3 states that all leaf nodes, which are nil nodes, must be black. This rule is never violated because the newly inserted node's children are still nil nodes, and nil nodes are always black. For example, if we insert node 14 into this red-black tree, it will be placed as the left child of 15. After insertion, 14's two children remain black nil nodes, so the rule remains satisfied. Rule 4 states that a red node cannot have a red child. There cannot be two consecutive red nodes. This rule might be violated if the newly inserted red node's parent is also red, creating what's called a red-red conflict. For example, if we insert node 19 as the left child of 22, both 22 and 19 will be red, which causes a red-red conflict. In these cases, we need to restore balance by recoloring and performing rotations to fix the issue. Rule 5 states that every path from any node to a leaf must contain the same number of black nodes, meaning the black height must be consistent. This rule is never violated when inserting a red node because a red node does not affect the number of black nodes on any path. To sum it up, inserting a red node can violate at most two rules. The root must be black, and there cannot be two consecutive red nodes. The fixes for these violations are relatively simple. In contrast, inserting a black node could disrupt the black height balance making the adjustment process much more complex. That's why, in red-black trees, new nodes are always inserted as red. Before we dive into fixing violations, let's first define some key relationships between nodes in a red-black tree. N, new, is the newly inserted node. P, parent, is its parent. G, grandparent, is its grandparent. And U, uncle, is the sibling of P, which can be either a regular node or a nil node. In the following explanation, to keep things simple, we'll focus mainly on N, P, G, and U, leaving out other nil nodes and non-essential subtrees. Now, let's go over the different cases of fixing red-black tree violations after insertion. The first case is case zero, if the newly inserted node is the root, it violates the rule that the root must be black. The fix is straightforward. 
just recolor the root to black. All the remaining cases involve fixing red-red conflicts, meaning both N and P are red. To resolve this, we first check the color of U, the uncle node. Let's start with the cases where U is red. Case 1. If U is red and P is G's left child, we fix it in three steps. Step 1. Recolor both P and U to black. Step 2. Recolor G to red. Step 3. Move the current pointer to G for further checking to see if any violations remain upward. Note that in this case, it doesn't matter whether N is P's right or left child. As long as U is red, the process remains the same. Case 2. If U is red and P is G's right child, this is the mirror image of Case 1. The adjustment steps are exactly the same as in Case 1. Now, let's move on to the cases where U is black, which includes when U is a nil node. Case 3, also called left-left. In this case, U is black, P is G's left child, and N is P's left child. To fix this, we take three steps. Step 1, recolor P to black. Step 2, recolor G to red. Step 3, perform a right rotation on G. Case 4, also called right-right. In this case, U is black, P is G's right child, and N is P's right child. This is the mirror image of case 3. To fix this, we also take three steps. Step 1, recolor P to black. Step 2, recolor G to red. Step 3, perform a left rotation on G. Case 5, also called left-right. In this case, U is black, P is G's left child, and N is P's right child. To fix this, we first perform a left rotation on P. This transforms case 5 into case 3, which we then resolve using the same steps as case 3. Case 6, also called right-left. In this case, U is black, P is G's right child, and N is P's left child. This is the mirror image of case 5. To fix this, first, we perform a right rotation on P, which transforms case 6 into case 4. Then, we apply the steps from case 4 to complete the fix. One important thing to note is that fixing one violation can sometimes introduce a new violation at a higher level in the tree. This is why we may need to move upward and make adjustments at multiple levels until the entire tree is balanced again. If we reach the root and find that it has become red, we simply recolor it to black to finish the adjustment process. Here's the Java implementation of the insert function. This part follows the standard binary search tree rules to insert the node. After the insertion, we call insert fixup to restore balance. Here's the implementation of insert fixup. These sections handle the cases related to case 1, case 3, and case 5. And these sections handle the cases related to case 2, case 4, and case 6. The root node is always recolored to black at the end. This is the complete table for all seven cases. Feel free to pause the video if you want to study them in more detail. All right, that's all for today. In the next video, we'll go through a step-by-step -step example of inserting nodes into a red-black tree and applying these adjustments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.